Why do you think what you believe? Consider that for a moment. Think about every single thing in your life. You might want to actually pause this for a few minutes and think about this. I'm calling you to do something. I'm calling you to an action right now. I want you to consider for a moment, maybe even use a list. That's always helpful. List out the things that you do in your life. Maybe the big categories, finance, money, debt, investments, health, nutrition, fitness, exercise, relationships, marriage, raising kids, sex, monogamy, all these different ideas. Some of which you may not even really know the, the definitions of or labels of. Every single thing in your life that you think you believe, you know, even your understanding of history or of certain historical events, certain words that people say, certain ideas, list out each one of those and then try to think about for each one of these major categories, name a book, a podcast, a video, a course, something that you've done to investigate each of these categories for yourself. And if you're scratching your head trying to figure that out, or if you're defaulting to college or high school or elementary, I don't know, for each of these topics, realize that you have done no individual investigation of things that run your entire life. You operate in US dollars in a fiat currency backed by nothing and you have no idea why that even matters. You don't even know what fiat means, you know, et cetera. You don't know how central banks work. You don't know about the Fed. You don't know the use of debt. You think debt is bad or you think debt is good or you don't care, whatever it is. You don't think about buying assets. On and on and on it goes. And that's just like the financial side, health. You don't question what food you should eat or shouldn't eat. You just kind of listen to what uh, you see on Twitter or here and there, or you, somebody mentions on a podcast, or you don't actually pull in any of these threads and try to figure out for yourself. And you don't actually go to each of these topics and then dive into them and try to understand all the different sides. You don't have to go into any of these topics with kind of a fighter in the fight. Like you can kind of just go in and figure out like, I want to get to the bottom of this. I want to understand what this side is saying, what that side is saying, and then what's in the middle. Because, you know, as Aristotle said, the golden mean in nature, that's usually where truth is. Truth is usually in the middle. Life is gray. Life is not black or white, no matter how much the political narrative would have you, have you believe. And if you defaulted to whatever you learned in college or whatever this professor said or that professor, you're not getting the whole picture. And what's crazy about this, and even when I was writing this and thinking about this, for most people, this is kind of like the norm. They stop learning when they get out of, even if they go to college or high school, they stop learning. And then they consume entertainment and they kind of, maybe they talk to their friends about different things and what, what are they doing? What are, they, what are you doing? How do you invest this? Whatever. Or they just like invest in their 401k and they just trust that will be taken care of. They literally follow what everyone else does. They think the way everyone else does. They do things by analogy, as Musk says, when you're first, first principles, people do things because other people do them. Can you think of a more ridiculous way to live your life? You do things because other people do them and you have no idea whether those people have done their work or not. And actually the numbers are heavily against the likelihood that anybody around you has done any of the work at all to understand what they're actually doing. Why do they say certain things? Why do they believe this? Why do they believe that? Why is this person good or bad or this or that? That's just a foundational way to think about this. I would say if you're listening to this at this point or watching this, you are somewhat of a self-aware individual. You probably are interested in growth. You wouldn't even be here at this point, a few minutes into this podcast or video, if that wasn't true. So I, I challenge you, even behoove, behoove you. It does behoove you. Let's define that word real quick. I want to define that word. It is duty, responsibility for someone to do something. Yes, it does. It behooves you for your own life and your happiness and your sanity and your safety and your financial future, et cetera. It behooves you. And I urge you to take that list that I hope you just wrote, wrote out kind of go to the big ideas in life, the big things that you spend so much time and energy on, like the big topics that you're doing just because everyone else is doing, you need to dive into those and understand what's going on here. You need to understand what are you trying to achieve here? Are you doing things just because it's easy or other people do it? And you keep doing that until you kind of find the leaks in your ship, so to speak. Because if you're doing anything, this is just a heuristic that I've discovered. I don't know why it's the case, it just is. But the more people believe something and the more people do something, in our modern world where we have mil billions of people and we have large communities of millions and millions of Americans, for example, and millions in this country and that, you know, or even millions in, uh, in Texas or this, each one of these very large communities, the bigger they are, the more likely they are to be wrong because there's this strange phenomenon where ideas that enter a mass amount of people and a mass amount of consciousness, I guess they just have to be simple and they almost have to be kind of easy because if you think about human nature, we want the path of least resistance. Like people don't want to do the work, but they want the reward. People want an easy, quick pill or fix or this or that. Like they want to have six pack abs, and but they don't want to 
eat right and they don't want to exercise or they want like the simplest thing or they want to think that they can buy the results. On and on and on it goes. And maybe that has a lot to do with it. Maybe the to be able to reach that many people when the mass of humans just want the path of least resistance, you have to feed them things they want to hear. And actually, as I talk about this, I feel like that's probably the case, which is why if you want to get to truth, you actually have to go to the small niches. And the internet allows us to do this. But the thing is, the internet is still dominated by big media, big tech, you know, big government at this point. And there's a lot of things algorithmically that are keeping these small niches outside of your purview. So if you don't consciously go for them, and if you don't consciously ask questions and challenge the status quo, you won't find truth. You will keep getting barraged with the narrative, the status quo that the government and the politicians and this side or that side, that they want you to believe. They want you to vote a certain way. They want you to go in debt. They don't want you to question what central banking is or fiat or any of that stuff. They want you to be a tax paying, law abiding debt slave. That's what they want. And they want you to trust the experts for your nutrition advice about what to buy. So you buy the grains and the processed crap so that you then stay sick and then you become reliant on big medical and big pharma for life. What better business model than to give drugs to sick people and to treat sick people through frequent doctor's visits and frequent prescriptions, literally no emphasis whatsoever or a tiny amount of, as an afterthought, oh yeah, you should eat right and exercise, you should do that. (laughs) It's ridiculous, but these are all what I call accidental conspiracies, things that have now created this massive conspiracy to maintain the status quo. Nobody did it on purpose. Nobody could plan for these things. It's a combination of like post-World War II, massive prosperity we had, uh, factory work, you know, the breakdown of the nuclear family, the individual promotion of like each person has to be a consumer and have rights and do this and enter the workforce and make more money. That's what it's all about. And continually delegate your thinking to the experts that know better than you, that should tell you how to live and think. There's so many of these things that converge to create the status quo that we have. And nobody, like no single mastermind could have planned this stuff. This is just happenstance that happened in a certain environment at a certain time with certain variables. And then you have the profit motive and then you have the political motive and then on and on and on it goes. We're talking the most powerful propaganda machine in the history of mankind is the American government just because it's so big and powerful. And it's been able to literally make it so that the entire world relies on the fiat dollar system. We are the reserve currency of the world. We push our inflation and a lot of our problems onto small countries and they hyperinflate and people are poor. Us living in America literally makes people poor outside. And and this is mostly the fiat problem. Um, If we had hard money, America would actually make the rest of the world prosperous. And we do in some ways make the rest of the world more prosperous because we have technology that, that grows here. Like let's say, We have big tech, for example, a lot of smaller countries will get access to that. They'll get access to the internet. So like innovation and entrepreneurship does make humanity better. But when you're using a fiat system that is not based on anything and you have fake money, that gets actually pushed and offloaded to not only future generations in America, but in real time to smaller countries that can't just print up more money and take care of it. Like the US government just has so much power to continually basically oppress the rest of the world. And if you ask the average American, you would say, oh, well, we take care of people. We do this, we do that. And there would be no mention of the massive amount of pointless wars and all these things that we're fighting. Fight terrorism, fight this, fight that. Now it's a fight a virus, fight this. It's just, notice how all these war on drugs, war on terrorism, now war on viruses. These things are not meant to end. They're just propaganda machines where there's lots of money and power to be had to be a part of that, right? Fight climate change, just another perfect example. Little people that are grifting to make money off these things while actually no feedback loops whatsoever as to whether they work or not. It's just a, it's just whether it appeals to a narrative or not. That's literally what it is. I mean, if you think about politics, what is, what is politics? Politics is, I'm going to get you to believe a narrative so that you vote for me. And then when I'm in office, I have all this power and I can get favors done. People can give me money and they can lobby and all these things. I get all this power, money, and influence. And then you, the voter, have no recourse whatsoever as to whether I did my job or not versus a company that provides a product or a service to a customer. And if they do a bad job with that, or if they disappoint that customer in some way, they will lose market share and eventually go out of business. When does government go out of business? Government is not beholden to the free market. And I know I'm I'm ranting and rambling here, but this is, these are all reasons why you have to challenge status quo. The status quo today in America is a literal corporate and governmental political propaganda machine is what it is. And the mainstream media props it up. 
And the average person that doesn't know any better becomes just a talking parrot automaton that has no idea what he or she is talking about. We have people that will go out and vehemently condemn people and criticize and say this and say that and say, you're killing people and you're doing this and whatever. All these really bad political divisive narratives. And they have absolutely no firsthand knowledge as I'm showing here. Like they haven't even dived into the research or read a freaking book on the topic or try to understand the other perspective. They've done literal no research or critical thinking whatsoever. And then they go to the front lines of Twitter and outside and they're protesting and they're yelling at people and they're telling you how it should be. The mob rule in America is sick, overweight, depressed, uh, unhappy. They've removed themselves from their environment. They're not healthy, happy humans. And they go out and then tell other people how to live and think. It is insanity. And in some ways, it shouldn't even be surprising because you have human nature, which I understand very thoroughly by understanding our evolutionary past and diving deep into this type of stuff and thinking about it for years. And then you have massive scale and you have media and you have information that moves at the speed of light like never before in human history have we had this. We've never even had up until 10,000 years ago, cities, right? Let alone phones or 911 or modern medical, which is useful in emergencies or if you get shot, but not useful for managing health. It's so much craziness. But what it all boils down to is for every single thing in your life that you've outsourced to someone else, that you've said, okay, I'll just do what you do because my neighbor does it or this person does it or that person on TV and a short news clip sounded convincing. So I'm going to do what they say. For each one of those things that you don't critically think on and investigate yourself, you are very likely having major negative impacts on your life, some of which you may not even realize. And moving into the future, you're setting yourself up for massive risk. Risk of ruin financially, risk of ruin for your health, risk of ruin for your happiness, fear, propaganda, constant barrage of all of it is not good for you mentally. And stress is a killer. So you could actually say that being plugged into this hive mind of propaganda and fear mongering and divisiveness and political tribalism is actually killing you. And I believe that's the case. This is actually killing people. And people are already sick. They're already stuffed in their face with sugar and seed oils and all this other crap. And then they're getting that on top of it. A hefty, consistent, never ending dose of fear and propaganda. <laughs> it's just like unbelievable. It's really sad. So my call to action is do this exercise, figure out what the basics of life are, health, finances, you know, investing, money, um, kids, relationships, you know, like how to think the basics of mindset, get all this stuff mapped out and investigate each one, come to what you think is the closest to like truth or what's going to work for you. And then stick to those basics and opt out of the machine. Stop watching the news. Stop paying attention to politicians and celebrities and people that literally have no idea what they're talking about and are usually paid to say certain things. Get out of it. That's it for today. Subscribe to the Better Human Newsletter over at Colin.Coach. It's a daily show. You get this on podcasts, apps, and YouTube where I'm on right now. I hope to see you in the next one.